Yeah. I appreciate it. Like, uh, yeah. Close, close. Oh, just talk real close. All right, okay, thanks. No, and, and Derek uh, had, had done all, the, you know, shot all this video and done all this activism and everything for the, for the year that he was here, and, and, and it was just, it was a really awesome experience to be able to cut all this stuff together and, and tie this story up. So I, I, I really appreciated uh, every little bit of, uh, of intricacy you've put into your, your life and, and documenting it and just creating this wonderful experience. For sure. Well, yeah, then thanks for uh, putting it all together, Bill. So we still have time for more questions. Allie, uh, Allie Havens. Uh, I have a question for Derek and Bo. My question to Derek is, I think everyone's sort of wondering, how did you remain so positive throughout all of this? Like, do you have tips or techniques for getting through these types of things? And my question to Bo is, uh, where do you see this film going? Uh, Sure. Uh, thank you for your question, Allie. Um, how did I stay so positive throughout um, these events and continuing, you know, throughout jail and, and onward? Um, I think having an attitude of positivity takes practice and um, focus. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard the example that our minds are like gardens, and if uh, one isn't constantly weeding the garden, then weeds are going to just naturally grow, and uh, in a negative attitude can sort of just take over. Yep. Um, I, I found that to be true in my life, and so I, uh, my tips uh, that you ask for are just to uh, be mindful of um, where you are, what you're doing, and uh, that uh, this too shall pass. So when there are bad things happening, like I said, I was really scared when I was going into jail, but it sure did pass. Here I am out of jail now, so everything's fine, and uh, just remembering that everything's okay. You know, if I can add to that a little bit, I, I, uh, I feel like you kind of have to almost observe your mind to some extent, um, and when the ne those negative weeds, if you will, come up, you have to pluck them, and mentally, you know, that means shifting away from the negative thoughts that might be coming in and choosing positive ones instead. And uh, for me, that's been really effective over time. And it is something that, that takes practice. And uh, as, far as, as far as where I see the movie going, uh, <coughs> honestly, I, I didn't, I mean, I, I anticipated the, uh, the amount of uh, uh, coverage it was gonna get on the internet, and, um, and, and I, I really saw, like, a, it, it's funny looking at, looking at it now, I see like 20,000 hits on there, and, and it's really exciting, you know. <laughs> Um, and then to see this many people out here for the premiere, it's really, it's really a wonderful thing. I, I think it's only going to get bigger, and I, I, I uh, see producing more of these types of films. Um, I, honestly, I think there ought to be a, a prequel and a sequel to this thing. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I think it's going to go big, and uh, a lot of people are going to be inspired by uh, the activism that's happened here. Um, I like. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I like the idea of the uh, the sequel, and one of the reasons why I registered victimlesscrimespree.com instead of Derek J's victimlesscrimespree.com, besides it being shorter and easier to remember, is that you know there's no reason why we couldn't have Rich Paul's victimless crime spree or you know whoever else might be uh, the next uh, civil disobedience star, uh, if you will. So who knows? Well, we don't know what's going to come in the future for this, but uh, at least as far as other films are concerned. But as far as Derek J's victimless crime spree is concerned. I'm proud to announce that uh, yesterday I signed the agreement for the DVD. So it's coming to DVD. Uh, that'll be happening later this year because, you know, it's old media, so it takes time to make these things happen. Uh, you know, Bo is going to be working. Uh, he actually just put the finishing touches on the director's cut, uh, which is a little bit different. You know, we're, we, we trimmed a few scenes back and we added a few scenes in. Uh, let's see, there's new music in the director's cut, so it's going to be a completely new soundtrack. And one of the things that's nice about that is the director's cut edition will have what's called royalty-free music. So you'll be able to take that version and, uh, you know, display it in a movie theater or you'd be able to, uh, you know, sell it or whatever and nobody on the soundtrack is going to, uh, to have a problem with that. So that's an important thing. So like if we want to get on Netflix, it's got to have that royalty free music. And the distributor that we're, we're picking up for the DVD has, you know, the connections that are necessary. I can't say for sure we're going to make it on Netflix at this point, but that's, it becomes more possible, like that we actually have an actual disc 
that can be sent to them. That's that's important. Uh, Amazon, I believe, will be carrying the product. So we'll we'll know more uh, as we get closer to the release date, which should be sometime in January of 2013 for the uh, the director's cut on DVD. And of course, you know, like any good DVD, uh, we'll put uh, we'll put the the activism scenes that were long, obviously, much longer than what you saw in the film. Uh, we're going to try to put as many of those on the disc as possible. If this thing, this interview here turns out decent, I don't know about the lighting situation, but if it turns out all right, we'll put that on the disc. And we are, after this today, after the lunch in the park, by the way, hopefully you'll join us for that, uh, the three of us are going to go and record a commentary track for the film. So, that's, you know, it's kind of the, the fun DVD things that uh, some people like to, uh, to see. We're, we're going to have all that. Uh, so, if there are any other questions, I think we may have, I see somebody in the back there who does, that's excellent. Uh, come right on up, and then uh, we'll just wrap this up after any other questions that uh, y'all might have. And I believe it was it Greg, if I'm recalling correctly. Yeah, Feel free to tilt that mic up towards you there, since you're right. pretty tall. Uh, Thank you. I really like the part with the thanks but no tanks part. I was wondering if you could go through that sequence of events of how you got that to work well, and how someone could use that as a kind of a template to do activism in their area. Okay. Well, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Greg, for the question, and uh, it was about. How did thanksbutnotanks.com come about? Um, Imagine, like, how, how is it a successful campaign? Uh, right. Um, well, I don't know how I initially heard about the tank coming to town. Does anyone? I mean, I'm sure with an audience like this, someone remembers <laughs> how the first news of it came about. <laughs> I guess it was through Clarky, um, who heard that his dad had said, no, he had been the only no vote uh, against the tank. And it started with that and a petition that he ran where he got uh, 400 signatures uh, plus signed from members of the community. Right? It, it was one of those things that all happened, but it was, it, it's such a big, uh, the Thanks But No Tanks campaign is such a, uh, it, it's, it's so wide in scope. It's, it's hard to say that, you know, there wasn't one person <laughs> orchestrating that and saying, well, you go do this and then you go do that. Uh, it was it was kind of like the premiere of this film where I you know we put it out there that this was going to happen and then I didn't tell Garrett Ian to go out and start chalking or Daryl to go out and chalk on the sidewalks in downtown Keene to advertise this film happening. So the same thing with Thanks But No Tanks is that uh, you know what we have and one of the strengths of this movement is uh, the Liberty Movement in New Hampshire is that it's decentralized. So yes, we're all combining our efforts in one geographic location, but. Nobody's in charge, so everybody just does what they think is most effective. So Clarkey, you know, did the petition, and a bunch of people went out, including myself. We went out and we got those petition signatures. There were flyers that were printed up. Jason Talley came up with thanksbutnotanks.com, uh, and you know there was media being produced in various different aspects, going out to various different uh, delivery methods from YouTube to Freaky <coughs> TV. And it's just, you know, you can't even really put your thumb on any one thing or one person that, that did it. And of course, ultimately, you know, they got the tank anyway. But, uh, you know, there was a lot of outreach and a lot of, I think, I think the success of the Thanks But No Tanks campaign was that most people agreed with it. Uh, the super majority of people in town, something like 80, 90 percent of people in Keene were on board. So whether they're left or right or neither, uh, a lot of folks uh, were on board with us with the idea of rejecting that. So there's no one answer to that question. Well, yeah, and I see it. Uh, it was uh, you mentioned there were so many different facets, so many so many uh, uh, parts going into that campaign. Um, that really is like the beauty of it is the, the fact that uh, it wasn't. You no none of us really like felt alone in our efforts. You know, like we we really. I mean, even though they they got the tank or whatever. <laughs> Uh, I think we set a precedent in the town. Uh, well, the, not a precedent in the town, but also a precedent uh, nationwide, sure. Sure. in that Keene was the very first place that Lenko, uh, the company that manufactures these tanks, uh, that Lenko had ever had any kind of pushback. Anybody, no one anywhere else besides Keene ever had any kind of organized in any fashion opposition to uh, this thing. And they even brought their head salesman into one of those city council meetings to where he could, uh, you know, try to keep the sale, uh, basically, because they were nervous they were going to lose the sale. 
And uh, they never, the, the head salesman told me they'd never experienced anything like, like what happened here. And I know that wouldn't have been possible without the great, some of the great folks that are in this audience uh, tonight or today. It's the morning still. Uh, but uh, so we're almost out of time here. I think we might have time for one more question. If there's anyone else with a question for uh, Derek or Bo or, uh, or just an observation, something you want to share. Otherwise, I had one question for you, Derek. Was it worth it? I think this is the question that everybody or a lot of people like to ask. You know, you spent 60 days in jail. Uh, there's hundreds of days over your head that uh, they're holding over you on a suspended sentence. Was it worth it? I wouldn't trade this experience for anything. No, it was absolutely worth it. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that for a second. Even while I was in jail, I was um, so gleeful and, and smiley because I knew that uh, this, this was exactly what I wanted to be doing. And so, yes, it was, it was worth it. And I hope that all of you enjoyed as well. All right, so we're going to clean things up. Remember, as you're getting up, there is that uh, wire going down the aisle, so be very mindful of that. Uh, Park, Ashwaila Park. If you don't know where it is, it's uh, right on the corner of Island Street and West Street here in Keene, just down the road, just a short bit. Uh, Daryl, I believe you've got sandwiches, chips, and drinks. Three dollars for a bag lunch, sandwich, chips, and drink, or bring your own if you don't like that. Uh, but it sounds great. What kind of sandwiches? There's bologna and cheese, and if you do not like meat, if you're one of those vegetable terrier people, I have Nutella sandwiches. Awesome. We we'll look forward to seeing you at Ashwaila Park, uh, 1215, the approximate start time. And thanks again for coming out to this movie premiere. I'm so glad that we could do this for you. Thanks, everyone. to do the drawing. Drawing. <laughs> you want to go run out and like get those people? <laughs> Sorry, you're only women here. <laughs> hey, if anybody has the uh, two-way radio line, we still need to do the drawing. Please come back into the theater. Do the drawing right now. Is there a cardboard off there? Yes. Oh, yeah. Hey, everyone. Speak about the drawing. Oh, if you want to use it. Where's your roof? Find your house. There is, there is a, uh, yeah, the, well, the, the cardboard. Oh, we can judge. Yeah. 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 It's sliced off. Oh, wow. It's right in the dollars. I think it's getting ripped off. There's a lot, a lot worse than I thought it was. Oh, yeah. I think the only good thing about all the situation is it's so cool. You guys bring it up hard. Oh, I'll tell you the official there. Yeah. You're heavy yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. You're not Derek J. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst thing I could think of. I did find out that uh, we don't get taxes in here. Uh, it was uh, lost in the world. I know. I was just like, I got to get I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to get it. Is most everyone still out there? Uh, yeah, there, 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 there. I just got a yes, got a Okay, so we're going to do the drawing now. Thanks to everyone who uh, helped, you know, uh, with paying for the seating and everything, having people in here, I'm mixing up these tickets. 
I'll be signing this poster that's being beautifully displayed by Vanna White over here. Thank you. Thank you, M7. So mixing, mixing this up. Okay. And do you all have your tickets ready? I'm going to read the number. 63704. Oh, thanks. Okay. 63703. I got it. Oh, you did? Oh, my God. Wow. You did? Oh, my God. You still have one more chance to win if you enter online at victimlesscrimesfree.com. We're going to do an online giveaway. It was funny. I brought my It was totally worth it because, I mean, I live at this desk, so, so um, yeah, and I didn't have one, so I was like, oh, right. like oh, right. I had a yeah. table I was working at. They actually so, uh, the office space. I, yeah, I, I, I brought my monster desk with me too, and I know what you're, I know what you're talking about. It's, it's been with me for decades. Right. 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 Okay, she's all okay. dry. Okay. Silver pole. Oh. Um, 